Hello and welcome to part two. So we're going to continue looking at GGJOB. We're going to look at its console and in particular we're going to try and understand what the menu items are. So here we've already seen the file menu so it's the usual stuff of uh, opening files, saving data and various options for setting and closing actions as we can see. The display menu this is an interface for opening new plotting windows and so you can see you can have a scatter plot you could have a scatter plot matrix parallel coordinates display time series a new bar chart show display tree basically that will give you a list of all the displays that you've created the view menu this is an interface for specifying the projection whether you want it 1d 2d 3d or even higher the interaction menu uh, this is an interface for specifying mouse interaction such as for example scaling the plot or highlighting points and then finally we have the tools menu and this lets you open up other windows and it allows you to manipulate various characteristics of the data and also to view those characteristics of the data so we're going to start off with the interaction menu and we're going to look at the identify menu on the console there is a frame that's labeled identify this is the interaction mode of the current plot so this frame contains most of the row labeling controls there's several options here for writing labels in the plot window the default is the record label so you can see here it's already highlighted but I'll click it again just to make it more visible so record label is the default what we'll do is we'll change our scatter plot for the selling price and for displacement what we can then do and what we'll do is click on the plot and notice what happens when I bring the cursor the mouse cursor close to a point it highlights the values we could of course label all the values in one go by clicking on label all but obviously not very useful well for, for this particular plot it's not very useful because the points are very close together so we can remove the labels by clicking on remove labels I'll now select let's say the year and when I bring the mouse onto the points on the plot we can see what year each point corresponds to let's select manufacturer and we can see who the manufacturer is if we select for example the year as well so I'm holding down the control key and selecting it we now have both year and manufacturer selected do this for as many variables as you like if you select too many variables then it's not going to be very clear and as you can see here it's getting a bit too cluttered we can actually make this a little bit bigger and that's uh, a little bit more clearer to see the price the model the manufacturer and the year as well let's now open up a second display let's look at a bar chart so we need to go to display and we need to click on new bar chart and so this is the bar chart and notice that the console has changed so this is the bar chart for displacement this is for year this is for manufacturer model selling price displacement I want you to notice that there is a white narrow band just outside the plotting area and that's because this chart has focus if I was to now look at the scatter plot just click on the scatter plot and notice that there is a white band around the plotting area showing that this graph has the focus I also want you to notice that when the graph becomes the focus notice how the console changes so I'm going to click on the scatter plot and notice that the console has changed I'll click on the bar chart the console has changed right so let's go to the scatter plot and let's change our scatter plot 
to the selling price and we can have well we can leave this as displacement or even seat height fuel capacity dry weight we can change it to whatever we're interested in investigating and we can see here that the relationship between model and selling price is actually quite weak and we can see here that selling price and displacement we do have a positive correlation and also with fuel as well what we'll do is we'll leave this as fuel let's go back to our bar chart let's go to the interaction menu and click on brush and I want you to notice the buttons and the menus inside on the leftmost portion of the console they're inside a framed label called brush and this is the view mode of the current plot so this frame contains most of the brushing controls and I want you to notice that a square has also opened up this is known as the paint brush by dragging it over the bars or even the points in the scatter plot notice how the color changes i'm going to drag this i can drag it in between two bars both are highlighted or i can do it individually and i'm not sure if you have noticed that whilst i'm dragging this brush over the bars the points on the scatter graph are also changing so I'm just going to move the bar graph to one side and we should now have a better view of the brush now notice the brush is it looks like it's disappeared but actually it's not disappeared if you click anywhere on the graphing area the brush will appear so I'm just going to click here and there's the brush now notice how bar is highlighted but the points are also highlighted on the scatter plot we can change the color of the brush by opening up this choose color and glyph panel we have a range of colors that we can choose at the moment yellow is is the selected color but we can change it to orange notice that the brush has changed to orange and we can also change the actual glyphs that are on the scatter diagram so let's say we want to change them to this big orange circle so i'll close the chooser and notice what happens so when the brush goes over a bar on the scatter diagram the points change to big orange squares also notice that here we've got a tick box persistent at the moment we're in what is known as transient style so what this basically means is that the points go back to their original color when the paintbrush no longer surrounds them so we've seen some basic uses of G Jajobi, but where G Jajobi really shines is how it interacts with all the different plots that you produce. I'm going to change this bar chart to manufacturer, and we can see we've got all the manufacturer names here. And let's uh, create a new scatter plot. Let's change this so that what we have is uh, something interesting to look at we're going to see how Gigi Joby can be used to make all the graphs interact and show us some insight into what's happening what we'll do is we'll also create another scatter plot we'll change this scatter plot into manufacturer and model click on the bar chart so now the bar chart has the focus and if we go to interaction and click on brush and we can choose the colors that we want. So here we can see that Huxvarna are represented by these points. And these are the models that Huxvarna produces. We're going to use the persistent checkbox. Once you change the color, the color will remain. Let's have pink for beta we can have red for honda and notice that the colors are changing so here we've got model and manufacturer so pink beta are represented here this is honda and we can also see on the scatter graphs that we've got the same situation uh, and let's change blue for kawasaki green for ktm orange for suzuki brown for yamaha and we can have gray for Huxverna. So we can see here all the different models 
and they're represented on all the graphs. One very interesting tool that Gigi Joby has is this 2D tour. And what we're seeing here is a random walk through the points. So we have three dimensions and we can choose which dimensions we're interested in. So we can actually increase the number of dimensions. So what's happening is there is a walk through all these four dimensions and our dimensions are the selling price, displacement, wheelbase and seat height. We can control the speed at which the walk is happening through the data points using this slider. So this slows it down and this speeds it up. We can also use our mouse as well to look at different angles of the data points. We can pause it as well. Now there's an interesting tool here, Projection Pursuits. And we, with this tool, we can do a number of interesting things. So at the moment, there is a walk through the data points and we can apply a metric that's given its current two dimensional representation. How clustered are the data points? Where is the central mass? And for that, we can select from here. The holes that just represents how spread out is the data and we can even optimize this so if we go to central mass and select optimize Gigi will select the central mass it'll use the random walk to find the projection that has the most central mass and in the same way you can also use this also for holes as well sometimes you'll find that it gets stuck in a local minimum and for that you just need to click on scramble and it starts the random walk again so in terms of interpreting this if we look up here we can see that the selling price the projection of the selling price is orthogonal to the screen for displacement there is a slight angle and it's going orthogonal to the screen slightly at an angle for wheelbase, it's going in this direction. So it'll be in this direction on the screen. And for seat height, it's going in this direction. And this tells us that there is some sort of relationship between wheelbase and seat height. And we can scramble this. And once again, we can see that there is still this relationship between wheelbase and seat height. So this relationship is in reference to holes. If we change this to central mass, and we can see that there is still a relationship between wheelbase and seat height, but this would be in reference to where the central mass is located. So you can see that Gigi Joby is a very nice interactive tool. You should experiment with this. So I hope you found this video useful. There'll be a third part to this as well because there's a lot more that this little tool can do. It's very powerful. If you found this video useful then don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. So until next time.